I entered the motion to vacate this morning after Mike Johnson brought part two of an omnibus to the bill to the House floor this morning and for forced all of us to vote on a bill that would fund abortion uh, up until full term. Speaker Johnson totally gave up every ounce of authority he had as House Speaker to use this funding of the government to secure the border for the American people, and it's, it is way past time. Um, he also violated the 72-hour rule. He forced all of us to vote on a bill without amendments. We had no choice. We couldn't introduce amendments. We couldn't fight for the values of our districts. Um, and we had to, to vote on a bill in one day that had 1,012 pages. But we cannot uh, move forward having a Republican Speaker of the House that is doing the bidding of Democrats, that is allowing Chuck Schumer to drive our legislation. Don't you worry that you're basically pushing him or, or any new Speaker into the arms of Democrats? Because, like, at a certain He's point... He's already in the arms of Democrats, and the, it's, it's proof in the vote count today. And I do not wish to inflict pain on our conference and to throw the, throw the House in chaos. But this is basically a warning, and it's time for us to go through, through the process, take our time, and find a new Speaker of the House that will stand with Republicans and our Republican majority instead of standing with the Democrats. Well, you heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Marjorie Taylor Greene has officially filed a motion to vacate Mike Johnson as Speaker of the House, even though Republicans now hold just a one vote majority, meaning that they are this close to losing that majority. And believe it or not, this move right here could end up costing them that majority and it could actually lead to hakeem jeffries becoming speaker of the house but marjorie taylor green is pushing ahead with this plan regardless while ironically claiming that johnson has to go because he's the one who's helping democrats as she might give them the majority which is uh very interesting now the reason why she's mad is because he agreed to a spending package with democrats to avoid a government shutdown and the response from republicans to this threat of a motion to vacate which she filed it officially but there's still more work to be done for it to be voted on uh has basically collectively been for her to not do this like they're, they're begging her desperately trying to get her to not do this because this is something that will cost them the majority, obviously. Like, it seems like an act of self-sabotage almost, but yet she uh, she wants to do it. Now, just to show you how little support she has for this move, even Matt Gates, responsible for ousting Kevin McCarthy, isn't on board this time, telling journalist Olivia Beavers he's not going to support a motion to vacate. And it's because he knows that this could literally facilitate the end of the GOP's majority. So Republicans are looking at Marjorie and they're like, what the fuck are you doing? Why would you do this? This is a gift to Democrats. But just to show you how unreasonable she's being, she attacked Mike Johnson for saying nice things about a Republican who's retiring from Congress. I mean, I don't know what she expects him to say. But nonetheless, listen to what she says. Speaker Johnson has also failed our majority because he is allowing Mike Gallagher to leave Congress after the deadline date where his district cannot hold a special election and elect a new representative for the rest of this entire Congress. Mike Gallagher betrayed all of us and Speaker Johnson, as, as the one who's responsible for our majority, praised Mike Gallagher on Friday after he announced his departure saying that he's great and praising him and thanking him for his service in Congress. Speaker Johnson should be forcing Mike Gallagher to leave early so that his district can hold a special election. And any strong Republican Speaker of the House would expel a member for leaving our razor thin majority in such a delicate, delicate state. Now, to be fair to her, it is really shitty of him to retire after the deadline for a special election. But counterpoint, it's also very hilarious because this actually really does fuck over the GOP. And anything that hinders their ability to harm people is, I think, good and also funny because the outcome here is just undeniably hilarious unintentionally so but what i love even more is this idea that johnson would expel a republican who is already retiring i understand the logic behind this recommendation that she's making but of course johnson isn't even going to entertain the idea because 
why would he? It'd make them look even more unhinged and unreasonable than they already are. But regardless, her crusade against Mike Johnson is not sitting well with other Republicans. And as a result, the claws are out for her. Now, I think that what they're doing is trying to dissuade her from making this motion to vacate privileged, which means that they'd have two days to begin the process to vacate Johnson as speaker. And this probably wouldn't happen until a couple of weeks when they're back from their Easter break. But she filed the motion to vacate, and what she has to do now is make it privileged. They're trying to scream at her from the rooftops, don't you fucking dare, please. But they have to walk a fine line because they know that if they're a little bit too aggressive, they could push her, uh, push her over the edge and piss her off. But there are some Republicans who are being pretty aggressive. So here's some tea from a Fox News reporter about what the chair of the Freedom Caucus had to say about Marjorie Taylor Greene and specifically this motion to vacate. Bob Good, again, the chairman of the House Freedom Caucus, um, it sounds like no one was really aware that this was going to happen this morning. He told our cameras uh, right as it was happening that I'm not, he said, I don't know anybody who cares about what Marjorie Taylor Greene says. That's from Bob good god damn look this isn't necessarily surprising since she was kicked out of the freedom caucus last july but still that is a pretty harsh thing to say about one of his own gop colleagues but i mean it is undeniably based i'll give you that now other republicans who also don't like mike johnson's willingness to compromise with democrats tried to more gently explain to her how this is basically the worst idea ever, and it's just a huge gift to Democrats. Uh, there are a couple that I'm not going to play for you, but one was Clay Higgins, who isn't necessarily in that camp. Like He actually does vehemently support Mike Johnson, but he doesn't hate Marjorie Greene, and he views her as a friend. And he posted this video to Twitter to kind of reach out to her and say, hey, bestie, for the love of God, please don't do this. I consider Marjorie Taylor Greene to be my friend. She's still my friend, but she just made a big mistake. You know, trying to vacate Mike Johnson's. I totally oppose that. Listen, Mike is a very good man. He begins every day from the right place. He's deeply principled. And he's like he's like a brother to me. And to think that that one of our Republican colleagues would, would, would call for his ouster right now. It's, it's, it's really, it's abhorrent to me. And I, I, I expect my colleagues to unanimously oppose this uh, big mistake that was presented today by, again, a lady that I consider a friend. Sometimes friend make, makes mistakes. And in this case, Marjorie has made a big mistake. I stand with Mike Johnson. I don't know. He sounds like a rhino to me, Marjorie. I wouldn't listen to him if I were you. This isn't a mistake, and it's a good decision. And I say this with the utmost sincerity. I have no ulterior motives whatsoever. I think that what he's saying, Marjorie, should be disregarded. I mean, are you going to let your party be controlled by rhinos like Mike Johnson, who's clearly been co-opted by Democratic Party elites? Of course not. So um, don't listen to him. <laughs> On a serious note, to be clear, I don't think that Marjorie is actually doing this for principled reasons. I mean, sure, she's unreasonable and probably angry that Johnson is choosing to negotiate with Democrats. But another Republican gave us some insight into her motivations here. And this is so unsurprising. But let's hear him out. You know, let me and also, Rob, let me just tell you, talk back to this vacate measure. This was an asinine thing pushed forth by Matt Gates. Uh, because he had a, a rift with uh, McCarthy. And then he did also, just uh, sadly enough, what I just got a text not 30 minutes ago say, from Marjorie saying, I'm wanting to raise money on this. Matt Gates raised money, money the whole week or, or the whole time he was creating chaos. This is not what it's supposed to be. This is not what adults in the room do. Marjorie doing something for attention and to fundraise? I don't know. I just would have never expected that from her. She really seems like a mature and selfless individual. So... This feels like a smear. Marjorie, you should probably show him who's boss and make that motion to vacate privileged. Do it. Don't let him smear you like that. <laughs> but listen, we haven't even scratched the surface because Fox News basically ripped her new asshole. And she wasn't named in these videos we're about to watch. But they spoke about her indirectly as part of a bigger problem that the GOP has 
and um, just listen to what they're saying. What person who would who could actually pass a psychiatric competency test would want to lead a group that includes Matt Gates and Bob Good and some of the other people that you just showed? I mean, I, Mike Johnson's as good as a gun. You had a speaker. Mm -hmm. Remember, you had Kevin McCarthy, yeah. and you wanted to get rid of him, and Jimmy Jordan wasn't yeah. good enough, and Tom Emmer wasn't good enough, and Steve Scalise. So, no, you got Mike Johnson. Uh, the House Republican majority is a dysfunctional embarrassment. I mean, Johnson, Speaker Johnson didn't ask for this job. He stepped up when, when the House couldn't elect a, a replacement for Kevin McCarthy. He's trying to manage an unmanageable conference. Republicans need to understand that they control one half of one branch of government, and now they're going to control it by one vote. You can't impose your will on the entire government when you have one half of one branch of government with one vote. The way, if you want, I want to get cut spending too. I want to, I want to do all these things. If you want to do that, there's a simple way to do it: win elections. Don't nominate lunatics. Uh, you know, get people who can actually win a general election, not just a Republican primary. Take back the Senate. Take back the White House. That's how Biden got the spending through. I have never witnessed what I'm witnessing now. A party with a narrow majority in the House of Representatives, everything on the line in the country, but committing a slow suicide, the party. This is why conservatives call the GOP the stupid party, by the way. Oh, they're not the only ones calling the Republican Party the stupid party, Laura, but do continue. Remember the big push last year by Matt Gates to oust Kevin McCarthy? Now, I pushed him on what that would actually accomplish. This is about the job. This is about keeping our commitment to have single subject spending bills and an actual budget get there, for the first time. Congressman, in, the fact of the matter is, y'all don't have the votes. I get you closer. I, I categorically okay. reject that we don't How have do the votes get, for the budget. Co hold on a second. Okay. Oh, of course, it turns out. Sorry, I was right. He was wrong. The new speaker, Mike Johnson, just signed on to a $1.2 trillion spending bill that essentially gives Joe Biden everything he needs. The fact is, as I tried to tell Matt Gates, there just aren't enough serious Republicans in Congress now who really want to cut spending. But let's look at the bright side. Come on, it's Friday for Republicans. Soon there's going to be no need to worry about motions to vacate the speaker's chair because they won't have a chair to vacate. You have to decide. Sooner or later, <clears throat> you're going to realize the bills have been worse since McCarthy was gone. The Democrats are in greater control. <clears throat> the hardliners on the right uh, have done nothing except make it worse. Now, the Freedom Caucus right now has been a disaster in public policy terms. If you think your job in life is to grandstand and complain while the other team runs over you, they're doing a great job. I mean, damn, listen, I never thought that I'd say this, but Laura Ingram is right. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome, Laura. Now, aside from her frustration with disillusion over the House Speaker, she didn't mention Marjorie by name. And she also talked about how the vote to expel George Santos and Mike Gallagher's retirement is part of the dysfunction that she's speaking about. But I mean, if she was against the bid to oust McCarthy, then she's going to be even more mad if Marjorie Green actually follows through with this threat to vacate mike johnson now even though this is clearly a coordinated effort by fox news to get her to rethink her decision i think that this could have the opposite effect marjorie isn't known for being introspective or self-aware she is a carnival barker who doubles down and never admits that she's wrong and i think that that's why they were talking around her using kid gloves not specifically mentioning her by name because they know that if they piss her off I mean, that could put her over the edge, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to end with a message specifically to Marjorie Taylor Greene. And this is just for her. So if you're not Marjorie, please feel free to exit the video. Marjorie, let's give them a couple of moments. OK. All right. So I'm assuming that it's just Marjorie Taylor Greene who's here. And this message is uh, for you, Marjorie. Bestie, do it. As a longtime fan of yours, I think that ousting Mike Johnson is God's will. Listen, you need to listen to your heart. And Jesus put this thought into your head. He told you to file that motion to vacate. And in this life, we follow Christ, not rhino Republicans doing the bidding of these Satan worshiping Democrats. So trust your gut and more importantly, listen to God because he's in your heart. He told you to file this motion to vacate. So you do it, queen. You bring that motion to vacate to a vote because there is absolutely no way this could backfire. I promise you. Ignore the naysayers. Follow your heart, Marjorie. 
file the motion. Get rid of Mike Johnson. He's a rhino. It's what Jesus would want. Like everywhere there's glue. Mama. You see them all the time. I mean, it's constant. Mama. My children are like, Mama, glue, 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 glue. I turn on Mama. TV, there's glue in the background. Every TV show, news media, glue, wow. Glue, 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 They're everywhere. Glue, 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 gl